Tonight, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force has confirmed a viral video showing a man being stoned did take place in St. Lucia. Yes, we are aware of the video. An investigation was launched immediately yesterday when it was brought to the attention of authorities. Castri Southeast MP Guy Joseph is being accused of having a history of verbally attacking women by the opposition St. Lucia Labour Party. And civil servants accept an offer made by the government negotiating team on Tuesday, leaving negotiations one step away from closure. All these and more coming up in tonight's broadcast. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelace and Amy Joseph. Good evening. It is Tuesday, the 18th of June, 2019. Welcome to the Hot 7 Nightly News. We're on Flow Channel 117, also being simulcast on KISS FM 105.5 and 105.9 radio. You can also watch us on our free mobile app. Just search for Caribbean Hot FM in the Play Store. I'm Michelle Gonzalez, standing in for lovely Saint Amy Joseph. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force has confirmed that the viral video showing a man being stoned did indeed take place in St. Lucia. The graphic video shows the man bleeding after receiving a blow to the back of the head with a stone. More in this report from Solange Alfred. It has been confirmed by the press office of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force that a recent viral video showing an elderly man being cut down by a barrage of stones was in fact shot in St. Lucia. Corporal Ann Joseph in the press office of the RSLPF says, though investigations into the matter are currently ongoing, the victim in question has refused to press charges against his abuser. Yes, we are aware of the video. An investigation was launched immediately yesterday when it was brought to the attention of authorities. Um, yesterday, the individual, the gentleman portrayed in the video, was interviewed by officers attached to the Criminal Investigations Department. Um, formally. He did indicate that he did not wish to pursue court action in the matter. Um, however, I can say that the investigation still remains active. There is something called the statute of limitations on such matters. Um, within the parameters of that, he can still come back to the police and indicate that he wishes to pursue court action and his matter would be investigated. It is still being investigated. He has the option to change his mind within the statute of limitations. The video shows not only the victim and the perpetrator, but also a bystander and the individual behind the camera. The indifference shown by the two non-factors in the video has struck a chord with members of society who have called for a level of disciplinary action to be taken against those standing idly by as an elder is struck to the ground. Joseph says the matter of recording a crime and inciting violence on camera is a tricky situation to deal with. It Depends on the circumstances. Um, if it is a situation where somebody would be in danger of being at risk themselves to intervene in a situation, of course you would not advise somebody to intervene. But there are instances where somebody's be behavior during the recording may seem like either inciting or um, inciting and encouraging whatever illicit activity is being captured on film. And obviously you don't encourage that the person can be charged um, criminally as being either an accomplice or inciting. Um, so there are legal ramifications to recording or your behavior during recording. With the statute of limitations still open to the victim, legal action can still be brought up against the perpetrator. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalfred. An overwhelming vote was cast by civil servants at the June 14, 2019 meeting to accept an offer made by the government negotiating team. In a previously broadcasted interview with General Secretary of the St. Lucia Civil Service Association, Claude Paul, he said if resolve did not come about swiftly, the end result will not be favorable to the country as a whole. The accepted offer by the civil servants include a lump sum payment of $1,800 plus 2% for the period of 2016 to 2019, with 4% being offered for the period of 2019 to 2022. What remains now to complete the process is to convey the acceptance to the TUF executive, who will then present the response to the GNT. This will bring a close to the negotiations between the GNT and the CSA. Castri Southeast MP Guy Joseph is being accused of having a history of verbally attacking women by the opposition St. Lucia Labour Party. SLP MPs say the recent attack on journalist Janica Simon was the latest in Joseph's string of attacks. They say intimidation is his MO and that even female members of the government are too scared to speak up against him. 
The opposition's St. Lucia Labour Party has highlighted what they called a recurrent and well-documented pattern of behaviour from a member of the government which demonstrates a lack of respect for women. During a Tuesday morning press conference, Castri Southeast MP Guy Joseph was called out for his abrasive behaviour towards women in politics and in the media. His most recent bout was seen and heard in an exchange with journalist Janica Simon. You're complaining that people are attacking your wife. I have no intentions of answering any questions you ask me. If you want to be a politician, be a politician and then we will deal with it from a political perspe perspective. If I'm trying to understand this response you just gave to my colleague concerning political, could you give me a guide? And I, I, I fail to understand where you're coming from. I've said what I have to say. No, sir, you you ask me, you ask me a question. Well, I don't consider the person a reporter. Have I refused to answer your questions? Have I refused? That's disrespectful. You decide for me what is disrespectful. You go ahead and form whatever conclusion that you want about this. Opposition leader Philip J. Pierre named a few who have fallen in Joseph's line of fire. You must look at the history. You attack Sir Frank. He said she must take the line. You attack Minister Rambali. He attacked Janet Compton. You must look at his history. You must look at his history. He attacked Emma Hippolyte. You must look at his history. Then he attacked Janika Simon. You must look at his history. Senator Gibeon Ferdinand said, this is a clear pattern. He said Joseph has a history of using intimidation to silence those who oppose him. The reason that it is it's very difficult for some of those, especially women in, in, in this government, and women who, who are part of the, of, of the organization, to speak out, is because of, of their own intimidation, and that's exactly what the opposition leader mentioned. If they're not comfortable with, with speaking out, it's because it not necessarily means that they, they do not have an opinion, but they're not comfortable. There may be repercussions that they're afraid to, to face. And, and I don't want to make any assumptions regarding the minister's position, but we know that minister has a very strong history of showing very strong opposition to matters relating to religion and women's affairs. And all of a sudden, we had the issue with the former senator with all those scandals. She was asked some questions in the public domain, and she was very careful with, with her response. You could see that she was trying to be very cautious. I don't think that this is just because she has become a different person. I believe that it is for the same fear of intimidation that we saw from the minister towards a journalist and towards all other women that he has spoken about. The exchange between Simon and Joseph occurred outside the House of Assembly on Tuesday, the 11th of June. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. Targeted agencies and organizations within the climate change, biodiversity and land degradation sectors will again receive specific training through a strategy of learning by doing. The face-to-face -face sessions will be carried out over six days from June 18th to the 27th. This initiative is being undertaken by the Department of Sustainable Development with support from the Global Environment Facility, GEF, through the increase in Lucia's capacity to monitor multilateral environmental agreements, MEAs, implementation and sustainable development project. The overall goal of the workshop is to contribute to mainstreaming the use of the NEIS in development planning and monitoring the implementation of MEAs and other programs in St. Lucia. This workshop is seen as a pilot working with GEF indicators aligned to the three Rio conventions, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity, UNCBD, and the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, UNCCD. St. Lucia has established a web-based platform providing the public and private sector with access to data and information for analysis on these three MEA's indicators through the uploading of raw data by contributors representing environmental data collectors from various agencies to a common data storage facility, CDSF. Workshop participants are expected to gain an improved understanding of the layout and use the CDSF and NEIS as well as a better appreciation for the link between planning for, collection and the use of data and an improved ability to formulate indicators and upload suitably structured data. Minister with Responsibility for Sustainable Development, Gail Rigobert, continues to support the department's plans to increase the value of the platforms as tools for development planning in St. Lucia. 
Currently, the department is engaged in a data collection drive and will incentivize participating agencies with the most up-to-date environmental data and shape files from their respective ministry, department or agency. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. You're watching the Hot 7 Nightly News. When we come back, an urgent message from the Department of Education. Opposition leader Philip J. Pierre asserts his alliance with Venezuela and the Attorney General's office facilitates a three-day workshop to bring key stakeholders together to figure out new and emerging ways to combat crime.